Okay, I am absolutely super excited, ecstatic. I've managed to get myself a little antiques haul and we're gonna do an unboxing video today to see what I bought. Owes me 280 pounds and, well, am I gonna make any money or not? We're gonna find out together. Okay, so we're gonna start off. We got a mid-century sewing box. Nice little sliding shelf, not in bad condition. Give that a little wax and we got ourselves a nice little, I don't know, 45, 50 pounds, something like that. That's a nice little uh, bit of mid-century there. We have a German clock. Is it Hamburg? I'm not 100%. It's got the crossed arrows, I'm sure, pretty sure it's German. Um, probably 1920s, oak. It's got the pendulum, the key. I have no idea if it works yet. I haven't done any looking into it or testing it. It's all come in on the job lot. There's the key. So let's have a look. Well, it seems to be okay, seems to work. Truth uh, testing, we'll be putting it on the wall and having a look, but uh, yeah. Nice 19, sort of 1920s, 30s clock. It's not going to be fortunes, I would think. Again, you're talking about 40, 45 pounds, give or take. Somewhere around there. This. Here is a strong box that is absolutely packed with stuff that we're going to dig through in just a moment. We'll get to that in a minute. I've had a selection of hats. That's a French one anyway. we got a bowler hat there. Is that by? Yeah, again, another French bowler hat. Atta boy. Okay. A nice graduation cap. I've no idea what these sell for. 2006. So. Well, it's bound to be a, a demand for graduation caps. Oops. Dun & Co, Great Britain. These hats are not going to be fortunes. I don't know about the um, graduation cap. HG quality menswear. Uh, the bowler hat's probably going to be about £20. The other hats are probably going to be around a tenner each. Hush puppies. Casual headwear. Now that rings a bell for some reason. Hush puppies. But I don't do vintage clothing and hats and things. And we got another bowler hat. And there's another one. TJ Brown hat. Uh, Auckland. London. Tress and Co. So okay. That's probably another £20. So there's a few nice hats there. That, you know, pull a bit of money. What have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hats. Got to be about a hundred pounds for the eight hats. <clears throat> Shall we start digging through the boxes? Now this, I liked. Now this is, I think, it's, well, it's skin or leather of some description. I'm not 100% one animal. Always check in the bags, pockets, things like that. Now what I like are these parrots here. Now I'm not sure yet whether this is 
Bakelite, Lucite, uh, Lucite or Celluloid. But it's really nice. And that is what's going to sell is these birds or parrots or whatever they are as the handle. It's that handle there that's going to sell this bag. Once this is all polished up with a bit of leather wax, that's going to look absolutely amazing. Um, the value is going to be determined by the handling and have to look it up. But without doing any research, I'm comfortable going to get probably £25-£30 for that, no problem at all. This one here I like. This a bit looks Scottish to me. Again, leather with the tartan inside, tartan interior. And again, I would think that's probably another 25, 30 pound bag for there. No maker's marks on it, unfortunately, that I can see. Got a nice little tartan bag, nice brass line on the front there. I've got a pair of British made copper picture frames. Now, I would think, looking at them, they're, again, they're not far off a hundred year old. Rupus copper work, and we have a pair. Um, comfortably, you'd be talking 10, 15 pound a frame. So you're talking probably 30 to 40 pound for a pair of antique picture frames in copper like that. And they're British, so they're nice. And the glass is in good condition, and that's uh, really important. Here we have a little beaded clutch purse. So you've got a little strap there to go around your fingers. I think they've been through all the bags and that themselves. There's something on the um, clasp. I'll make some description, but I can't read it without an eyeglass. But a really nice little beaded purse there. I don't know if you can see it on the clasp there. I'll probably add it into the description in the make when I get an eyeglass on there. But again, that's a really nice little beaded purse. It looks to be in pretty fair condition. And again, you're probably talking 15 or 20 pound for a nice beaded purse like that, glass beadwork. Just a nice decorative piece. This, you're all looking at this for the first time really with me. I haven't actually gone through it tidy. It's been glanced at, put into boxes, and this is the first proper look at it I'm doing. So we have Wedgwood, Jasper Way, 19th century biscuit barrel. Beautiful looking thing. Very classical scene. Looks a lot like the plate has gone off the top there, but I'll give it a polish and have a look. It's EPNS. Um, the way to know with Wedgwood, if it's got England on it, it's 20th century. If it's got the date code, which is a letter for the date code, then it's 19th century. So that's a nice bit of Wedgwood. Jasper Way. Biscuit barrel. With no chips, cracks. Just a bit of plate wear. I see that comfortably 65, 75 pound. I've sold a Wedgwood biscuit barrel recently for similar money, um, similar period. So over the moon with that. And it doesn't seem to have lost any of this applied opaque. So yeah, um, nice little piece of Wedgwood there. I'm over the moon with that. That was a nice little find. This year is nothing too special. Um, it's a pressed glass claret decanter. Um, nothing special, silver plated top, but they sell. And I'd sell them for about £20 in the shop, give or take. £20-£25 each. If you don't be wrong, if you had a silver mounted one with cut glass, you're in the hundreds, but that is not what this is. This is a pressed glass, silver plated, 20 25 quid, and they do sell, people like them. They like claret jugs. We got a nice bit of 
check glass. That's a really nice piece. You've got this sort of beehive pattern here. It's missing the mesh lid, end of day glass, Art Deco, lovely colouring. Um, I'll probably get a mesh lid to go on that, well I may do, and um, that's comfortably around £30, give or take. That's a nice little vase and it's in really good condition. A couple of different layers, you've got the clear casing over the colours. Beautiful little thing actually, I like that. This one here I think is a bit of Kribska, I'm not 100% yet, I'm going to have to check, but I think it's a bit of Kribska. Um, don't think it's Murano. But it's nice, it's got blue at the top, graduating down into green, so it's a couple of colours running through it. It's got a sliced and polished base. Really nice little uh, bit of art glass. Again, not fortunes, around £30 give or take. Um, fortunately... If it is Kribska, I'll get the designer and that'll be listed with the designer and everything with it. Oh, that's a nice uh, old piece that we haven't seen for quite a while. Uh, old can opener. It's a cow or bull. But yeah, these, um, I haven't seen one of these in years. Old can opener there. Uh, believe it or not, they sell for £20 plus again. I'll have to look up the prices to see uh, where I'm at, but um, comfortably it's not going to be less than 20 quid on that. That's a nice Victorian can opener, or early 20th century. Just a nice thing. I got some clocks as well to show you in a minute. Um, and some nice clocks as well. So we got a pair of spectacles. Now these are always rolled gold. Uh, they are pinched, so you pinch them there and they'd go onto the nose. But this chain apparently is nine karat gold, the chain. Um, I'll have to get an eyeglass on it, but they told me the, the chain was nine karat. So fingers crossed it is, because if it is, I'll be taking the chain away, weighing the chain in, because the chain's got to be three or four grams on his own and then selling the spectacles separately for I don't know about 10 or 20 pounds they're not fortunes but again it's another little curio probably go in the shop here got a beautiful little agate brooch really pretty colouring running through that it looks very much like blue john to be honest with you but I'm pretty confident it's agate Sterling silver mounted, just a nice brooch again. Again, it's all sort of the same price range, around you know, 20 £30, pounds, somewhere like that, but it's adding up fast. This is beautiful. Agate, it's all carved. Now, that's a bellows where you would blow the air into your fire. Um, I know 100% what that is. That looks like a shovel. Is it? Not sure. Or clock. Anyway, we have a group of fobs. All carved agate. Look at the colouring on them. Absolutely beautiful colouring. Comfortably, you're talking around a tenner each for those, I would think. Um, and if I have an Albert to put on them... That one's a fob. Somebody's already carved initials into that. So these would go on the end of it like a watch chain, a watch albert, and just dangle there's a little fob. And they got to be worth around a tenner each, polished and carved agate like that. But if you said 30 quid for a job lot for them. I've had a selection of whistles. Some of them are older. That's a girl guides. This one's a nothing one. Uh, these ones, these two are quite old, they're earlier. And then we have the Acme. 
Even if you set a five or a whistle, you're talking this £25 by there. Now we've got three clocks coming up and I absolutely love them. Now this one is James Howells & Co Limited, the Cardiff Drapers Cardiff. So I'm not sure if it was made for the store. It's an alarm clock. I don't think this would be um, public, you know, uh, mass produced. Especially with the name of the store on there. That's just a really nice thing. Value I couldn't even tell you at the moment. I gotta do research on this. Just a nice thing. So just a nice thing at the moment. Can't tell you the value, but it's you know it's gonna have some good value on that one. This one here, beautiful thing. Uh Asonia, American Asonia Clock Company. There you go. Dated on the back, 1878. Pattern number, or patented April the 23rd, 1878. Made in the United States of America. And it's sort of a barrel clock. And it seems to be in really good condition. So again, something I'm gonna have to look up is this Asonia. American clock. I think it's going to have a bit of value to that. And this one, I think it's quite early. It's out of his housing. I think it would have had housing. Um, but a really interesting clock. I can't tell you a lot about it other than the fact it's got a Paris stamp on the back here. I haven't done the research on it yet. But that's a seriously early looking clock. So, without a doubt, it's 19th century. I don't know if they've cut, they've cut that. I think to turn it into like a travel clock on the side. I think, but we'll see. But um, yeah, that's going to need some research. That's an alarm clock as well. So yeah, that's going to need quite a bit of research on the clocks. Okay, so moving on, we've got a nice old strong box or trunk. Nice bit of bronze on the front here. No maker's market I could see, but you're talking that's probably a 30 pound trunk anyway on his own, just for the trunk. So shall we have a dig through and see what we can find? And let me show you, look at this. I can't wait to see what's in here totally myself. So this is an old camera tripod. Oh, look at that, it's brass. Brass and telescopic. So that wouldn't have been a cheap tripod in this, when it was done in this day. So that's gonna have some decent value with this original leather case. Now the, it's holding this attached to it. So that's a box for a camera. But that's probably a 30 or 40 pound tripod on his own if they want an original tripod. We have a number two brownie. So we have a box brownie. Don't ask me how these things work, couldn't tell you. I'm not going to play with it, I'm going to leave it alone because I don't know a lot about it. But what I do know is box brownies can be worth money, and that no doubt is going to relate to the tripod. And it's got its original box and lid. Look 
at that box brownie in its original box. We're going to look at number two brownie up. I'll splice in the price of a number two brownie now so you can see what they are worth because I haven't got a clue. Oh, look at that. It's even got his original book. Number two brownie Kodak. Oh, wow. I like that. Don't think I've ever had a box brownie in such good condition. So that's really good. Don't know what this is for. It's in that old leather box for some description. But people like boxes. We have another clock. This one's got a butterfly on the front. So I don't know if that relates to the maker. Early tin one. Looking at that, I would say that's either 30s or 50s. Rusty as hell. Lovely look to it. Interesting. Again, going to have to research that one. What we got here? We got an egg. Oh, it's a little cotton reel holder. A little bobbin holder. A little sewing accessory. They sell, you know... That's a tenner, but they're on his own, just that. I've got a load of scissors. Oh, look at those dainty little scissors. Look at that. Are they just not beautiful? So, I've got a selection of scissors. Yeah, there's quite a few really ornate pairs in here. They got a little heart in the centre. No fortunes. I'll probably put them on job lot online, and I would. Ex I'll start them at twelve quid, but I'd expect them to finish somewhere around twenty, thirty pound for those. It's unusual. We got a little brass strap work egg, but it's got a lock. It's very thin brass, but it comes, that goes over there, and it's actually got a little lock on it, so I don't know what that is for. Why would you lock the egg? What would you put in there? Well, that is just so sweet. I have no idea what it's worth. It's not going to be less than 10 or 15 pound, 20 quid. It's just different, I like that. Yeah. Another egg. Somebody liked their eggs. A little wooden egg. It's nothing much. That looks a bit like crocodile skin. Looking at that. Compact, is it? Yes. So we've got a selection of compacts come in, but this one does the lipstick as well. I think that's a little best of case matchbox thing. That's not a major. A little, uh, is it? Yeah, like a manicure type set. We got a few pen knives. We got a nice horn, antler horn pen knife there. Little mother of pearl pen knife. Don't know what's in there yet. Again, another manicure type set. Needles. That's what's in those needles. Um, believe it or not, a fishing lure. Whoa, lead shots, fishing sh fishing weights then for your, for your line. So you got lead shot in that. A 
I said there was some fishing stuff mixed in with this. I can't even open that. Uh, I would think that is a, like an old packet to hold your cigarettes or something. That's what I would think that is. A lot of this stuff's going to find its way to a car boot cell. So we got a little box of fishing flies here. Nothing jumps out of me there. It's not going to be a lot of value. The Hercules waterproof silk braided line. So we've got a bit of fishing line there. Look at how they used to present that. A box with a beautiful label just for a bit of fishing line. Just for a bit of fishing line. It must have cost them more to produce the box than it did the line. <coughs> so we got Kodak film wallet. Keep it that with the photography stuff. What's this lot then? So we got a selection of old postcards. Can't see anything of real value yet, but as a collection, somebody may want it. So we've got a collection of postcards there. So we have the ceiling set. So you have the different waxes, the candles to burn, and you have seal here so you'd melt your wax onto your paper and you'd put your seal in to seal the uh, letter so an old seal set okay they're not fortunes that's probably a tenner if I'm lucky nothing in there that's quite pretty that looks like a bit of silk work I would say that's some sort of compact, you know, because you've got a mirror there, you can put your makeup or whatever in by there, and you have this silk work on the front. Unfortunately, our light, I think, might be a bit bright. It's too late now. No idea what that is. That's for a coin holder, is it? Yeah, I think that's a coin holder, coin dispenser. Half pence, one pence, two pence, five, ten, and fifty. Don't think it's a value, it's a collectible market for that. And again, another coin holder. Again, they'll go on a boot sale or in a job lot somewhere. So we've got a collection now of compacts. It's quite a pretty looking compact. That's not compact, is it? Maybe a cigarette box on that one. That's compact. So these ones are legitimately compacts. And we got, what's that, a little purse? No, cigarette box. Would have been nice if I was silver, but hey. We've got more compacts. That's a nice Art Deco one, but it's lost some of the enamel in. Lots of the enamel in, so it's no good. Just an old box. There's a pretty box. You know, it'll go on my shelf for a fiver. I know what this is. It's an old shaving mirror. If I could ever open it. Toilet mirror or shaving mirror. Beveled edge mirror. I need a shave. Again, little collectible, nothing major. We have another wax set, ceiling set. Look at that. Is that not sweet of our little tiny copper chamber stick to hold the candles? That is so cute. <coughs> Again, they're not fortunes. You know, you're lucky to get a tenner on a set like that. And there's another wax set again with the candle. We got a nice dressing table set here. Sort of a mid-century one, I would think. Brass. It's not going to go for a lot of money, but I have had people coming in asking me for these.
Songs of Praise, we don't want that. Another pair of scissors to go with those. Okay, so two hundred and eighty pounds spent. The clocks are really interesting me, as are a couple of the bags. I like the bags and I really like the clocks. The Wedgwood biscuit barrel and a couple of bits of glass. There's some really nice pieces here. Um, if I try and add it up, I haven't got a foggiest idea at the moment, but I'm gonna more than double my money. Comfortably, I'm gonna more than double my money. Um, you know, it's over 100 pounds just in the hats and I don't value the hats at all. Uh, you know, ten or here, twenty quid there, and there's going to be is eight of them, so it's over hundred pound just on the hats. A lot of this box of junk or bric-a-brac, unfortunately, is going to end up in either back in a miscellaneous box, going back into auction with other pieces, or it's going to end up at the car boot sale and they sell stuff. That no, obviously not. That's quite nice, but you know, some of the stuff here is going to go out a pound or two each. You know before me what well, that number two box brownie is worth because I've already spliced it in into the video, but I don't know yet, so I'm quite excited to see if that's worth anything. The Wedgwood, the Wedgwood biscuit barrel, you know, that's a good £75, 60 to 70, 75 pounds. Overall, I'm pleased with the, um, the job lot. I would have liked some treasures to have been in this box because I didn't actually go through the box I had a quick look like that and I said yeah I'll take it thinking you know we're gonna have some interest in there unfortunately it's nothing much in there well there is but for me I'm very fussy <laughs> so all in all you know it is what it is it's um, a nice little job lot I'm really pleased how much profit I make I have no idea but I got some bits for the website I got some bits for eBay and I got a few bits here for the shop and then what's left then will go back out on a car boot sale. All in all, I think it's um, a good little haul. And you know what? It was nice to have an antiques haul to unbox and go through. Hope you enjoyed having a little look at it anyway. Um, if you have any info on the clocks, would always appreciate you know any help I can get. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.